Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and in this video we're going to be talking about a new card spoiled for release in the OCG's Maximum Crisis Booster Set, the booster pack that we will be getting around April to May of 2017. And in this video we're going to be talking about the newest piece of BES slash Boss Rush slash Gradius slash Big Core support, if you want to call it any of those things, that goes alongside the Great Fortress Zealous Field spell that was spoiled a few weeks back a few weeks prior and the card in question for this video is another ship i don't know why we're getting more bes ships i didn't really think we needed them but if konami's going to keep designing them the way this one is then absolutely yes please give us more of these because this one is really good in my eyes but the card in question for this video is bes big core mark three did it really take them three iterations of big core named ships to finally get one that worked and that was good I think that's a bit strange and kind of inexcusable considering Big Core was the flagship of this entire theme, don't you think? But anyway, Big Core Mark III is a light machine effect type monster. It's level 8 with 2700 attack and 1900 defense, and its effects are numerous. <laughs> its first effect is if your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. So, kind of balanced, can't summon itself in attack position, I mean that's kind of fair. Considering the fact that it special summons itself for free, it's a literal cyber dragon, and it kind of makes you have to rely on the field spell or boss rush to put it out in attack position, and it is the biggest ship to date, so I guess it's kind of fair. It would be 3200 attack as a free special summon that doesn't use the field spell. If Great Fortress Zealous is up, it wouldn't waste Zealous' special summon effect for the turn, so I guess that's fair, and it can't die in battle anyway, so I guess putting it in defense is is a fair trade-off but anyway if this card is normal or special summon place three counters on it that's very good that's a very good little bit of synergy it gets counters whether it's normal or special summon so this card will always have counters on it whether it's summoned off boss rush great fortress zealous or its own effect if you have to normal summon this card it will also have counters that is something that none of the ships prior have ever had they've always either gained counters on normal summon or on special summon and they've never gained counters off of both the only thing that has changed that as of recently is the addition of Great Fortress Zelos into the uh, theme's repertoire of things to play with. But, continuing on, cannot be destroyed by battle at the end of the damage step. If this card battled, remove one counter from this card if you cannot destroy it. I mean, the same, the same old standard BES effect of this card can't die in battle, it uses its counters as shields, like the game design of Gradius, of the Gradius side-scrollers. And if it does not have one of the counters or shields, the card destroys itself at the end of the damage step. Same old theme, constant effect for the theme. So, not anything that should be surprised there. Surprising, rather. But, its last effect is, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Shuffle all BES monsters and big core from your graveyard into the deck. Now, <laughs> that one's a good one. This is something that we've never had for this theme before in the past. And it's something that's actually very rare for a theme to have is built-in self recursion that is very good and very easily accessible this card requires you to do nothing outlandish other than summon it and have it die which is the entire game plan of how the boss rush deck operates you use boss rush to maintain a string of boss monsters almost as if it was a wave of bosses in a side-scrolling video game huh weird right it's almost like it's based on one of those <laughs> but the biggest problem that we've had with the boss rush deck in the past is the fact that you've run out of monsters cards like pot of avarice and jar of avarice have alleviated this in the past but pot of avarice is banned and jar of avarice is a trap therefore kind of slow this card is a searchable accessible piece of the deck's engine that is also just happens to be the biggest ship which is very important because it essentially replaces Covered Core because Covered Core was the only real big ship that could reach the 3,000 attack point margin with the addition of Great Fortress Zellos on the board. But this card goes beyond that to 3,200 3, attack, meaning that Covered Core has essentially been invalidated. And this card gives you recursion. It lets you put your monsters back, meaning that you have a searchable form of card in your engine that allows you to reset your resource pool of BES monsters in your deck to summon off of Boss Rush or Great Fortress Zelos up to three times per game. It banishes itself, and that sucks, but there had to be some sort of cost. It couldn't just be infinite. 
there's no reason for this card to have been infinite in any way shape or form it's already good enough as it is I think this card is fantastic it is the first ship that we have gotten in five waves of support for the boss rush deck that has been a card that completely synergizes with the rest of the theme let's think about that for a second it has taken five support waves and three iterations of big core named ships for Konami to finally make something that was good and synergized completely with the entire boss rush theme let's 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 recount this we had big core the original the flagship the first support wave for this entire thing coming out in rise of destiny at that point it was more of just a shout out to their gradius themed games and not really a deck theme concept but then they built off of this in cybernetic revolution when they released crystal core elemental energy when they released tetrin uh covered core and boss rush so that's when we finally got boss rush three support waves in and then i think stardust overdrive was when we got big core mark two and now we get great fortress zelos and mark three in this set so that's the fifth support wave and they're just now printing cards that are actually decent for this deck you'd think that it was a konami ip that spawned this deck and you would think that that would make them want to put extra effort into making sure the deck was good because they were very faithful to the gradius side scroller which is a very prominent piece of konami digital entertainment's gaming history the gradius side scrollers are very well known and these cards are a direct design based off of that so it is a konami ip being implemented into another form of konami's gaming mediums you'd expect that even though they did keep it faithful they could have tweaked things around and made the deck very decent they could have done this very very much prior to this fact of the cards they're just now releasing 12 years later after big core's initial release i don't quite see that it's even more than big core i think elemental energy came out in 2005 so it's 12 years after boss rush came out is when we're getting these so rise of destiny was like what 2003 or 4 or something like that it was pretty early on in the game's inception so like these cards have been out for ages and they're just now trying to make them good and i don't think we need more ships but like I already said, if Konami is going to give us more ships to support the theme, make them all like this. This card completely synergizes with the entire theme. There's no conflicting interest here. There is so much conflicting interest with the previous ships, all of them, with Boss Rush. None of them get counters when they're summoned off Boss Rush except for Mark II, Big Core Mark II. But that was an addition to the theme because they realized they had messed up with the original wave of the ships. Big Core, Tetrin, Covered Core, and Crystal Core do not get counters when they are special summoned. You have to normal summon them to get counters. But when Boss Rush is on the field, you cannot normal summon or set. And you cannot play Boss Rush the turn that you normal summon or set. So you cannot establish one of your ships through normal summon to gain counters and then play Boss Rush to establish the entire theme and play string of your deck. The entire way to play the deck was not possible. That That's terrible oversight. These cards aren't even busted. You could have definitely just made them have counters. I mean, older Yu-Gi-Oh was different times, but we've always basically had outs to these sorts of things. The only real thing that makes this deck pretty decent is Great Fortress Zelos. The fact that that card has four effects, half of those effects are cleaning up the mess that Konami made with their previous waves of ships, giving them counters when special summoned when they normally would not have them. That's just a big cleanup job on the part of Konami. Now, if they want to give us more ships that slowly replace all the old ships, that's perfectly fine. The only old ship that's even somewhat decent is Tetrin, because Tetrin can remove counters to blow up spells and traps. Covered Core, kind of irrelevant. It's a 5, so you can make Cyber Dragon Infinity with it, into Nova into Infinity. But other than that, it's largely irrelevant. Covered Core is literally power creeped out by this card. It's made irrelevant by this card, because this card is now the biggest one. Covered Core was only played because it was the biggest one now this card's the biggest one and it's also just better you don't have to waste your field spell special on it you don't have to waste a normal summon on it it doesn't tie up your normal summon it doesn't tie you away from boss rush it gets counters regardless of how it was summoned it recurs all of your resource pools the only thing that could have made this card better is if it also shuffled boss rush back into the deck that's the only way this card could have been really better and not completely changed the way it was designed this card synergizes perfectly with the entirety of the theme, and it's definitely something I want to see more of if Konami decides to give us more BES ships. But Jesus Christ, it took them five support waves 
and three iterations of big cores to finally get a card that worked well for the theme, that worked completely as intended for a play string and a play style of a deck that needs cards that don't conflict with each other. Literally the entire deck conflicts with itself until Great Fortress Zelos. Great Fortress Zelos is the great unification factor of all the old support because it all just doesn't work well together until you add Fortress Zelos and now this card. So definitely want to see more of this. But anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this card in the comments down below. Whether you think it's designed well or if you think it's poor design or whatever. If you want to see more ships like this, all that sort of stuff. I think that they really could have taken some liberties to make all the ships like this card and actually have had a good Konami based IP that was a good deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! I think that would have been great. I mean, there's so much incentive to do so because it's a truly Konami IP. But I digress. But anyway, guys, as always, like the video to show your support and help the channel grow. Subscribe if you already haven't, and if you want to see other videos you might also like, definitely go check out my channel itself. It's got a thousand plus uploads on it, so if you can't find something else you also like, I'd be incredibly surprised. But other than that, if you want to support me directly, you can now back me on Patreon. I'll have a link to it somewhere up here or here or wherever I decide to put it in the video, and it will link you directly to my Patreon page as well as there is a link in the description. And even by pledging as little as $1 a month, you are investing in my ability to continue to make content as well as to allocate funds, resources, and time to making better and more varied content that is improved in the future. It's just a great way to show support, and if you have the ability to and the want to, then you have my eternal gratitude. But other than that, that's basically it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought, like I already said, in the comments down below. And thank you, as always, for watching. Thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.